It's our last week of the book of Ephesians. We're in chapter six of six, and this is Paul's final let's go, if you will. Very, um, very much an exhortation. Um, you can imagine him in a huddle. He's gone from God to Christ to the gospel to us, and this is his final pep talk, if you will. And he has just gotten done in the previous paragraph, um, if you haven't been tracking with us, talking about spiritual warfare. And he's saying there's an unseen world that affects the seen world that we live in. And as he talks about how to push back in the spiritual battle that we all face, he draws in this paragraph on a really familiar image. And it's the image of a uniform of a soldier. So he's talking about a belt and a breastplate and shoes and a shield, uh, a helmet and a sword. And we might... uh, this might be unfamiliar to us. We may be more likely to be able to name the parts of like a football uniform or something like that. But this was very familiar to his contemporary audience because it was the uniform of the Roman oppressor. And um, he draws on this and everyone knew about the fierceness of Rome. um, And they knew that when they saw the belt and breastplate and shoes and shield and helmet and sword of Rome, they knew that it was not good news. However, he replaces this not with um, any kind of military might. He doesn't He doesn't say we should respond to this with our own might. He's talking about truth and righteousness. It's a metaphor. The readiness given by the gospel of peace, meaning be ready to share the good news um, of Christ. The shield of faith means you can uh, extinguish the flaming darts of the evil one, which means resist temptation. Jesus prayed this prayer for us in Matthew chapter 6 and taught us to pray the same thing. He says the helmet is one of salvation, which means you know how the story ends. If you read the back of this book, the very back, the book of Revelation, you know that the story ends with us not losing the spiritual battle if you're in Christ. And he says that the sword of the Spirit is the word of God, which means not only the gospel, but also the written word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. So when um, he talks about uh, this image, it brings up a familiar object of dread, um, which is to say the Roman oppression that they were under. But when he, uh, when he responds to this, he says we respond to this sort of spiritual warfare as a Christian, not with the weapons of warfare that we know, um, but rather with, um, with Christian peace. Um, and this is always good news. Um, a war is never good news. But whenever you can replace war with peace, then, uh, then you've done something special. And that is how we are to respond as we go about our spiritual battle. Um, he ends by saying, to this end, Keep alert with all perseverance. This is his final, here we go, because he's ending the letter. Making supplication for all the saints. This word just means prayer. For all the saints, this word just means Christian. So if you're in a spot where you're like, ah, you know, 2020 has been hard. I'm not having a lot of energy. I'm not having a lot of pep in my step. Um, You go, I don't know if I can really do this. I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm ready to share the gospel. I'm not feeling particularly righteous or truthful. You go, here, what can I do? You go, well, here's the one thing you can do, even if you're on empty. You can just make supplication for all the saints. All you got to do is bow your head and pray for another Christian, a brother or sister, and you'll be fully participating with what Paul is trying to say. It says, and also pray for me that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the, the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. This is an ironic statement um, because ambassadors don't wear chains. They, norm- they normally are applauded, but he's saying, I am representing an ambassador, someone who represents someone from another land. And he's saying, I represent Christ. And he said, in chains, because this world has not accepted his message. He's quite literally in prison. That's where he's writing from. He says, but pray anyway that I may declare it boldly. And he says, boldly is normal. He says, this is how I ought to speak. So um, when it comes to actual war, um, and we think about what war actually means, um, it's not good news. But when we're bringing truth, righteousness, the readiness of the gospel, a resistance of temptation, salvation, and the word of God, then there's room for boldness because we're speaking in love and not hate. That's Ephesians chapter 6, 14 through 20, and we have got one more study on Thursday at noon. See you soon.